I love seeing other kindred souls. Mm. Just being able to be yeah. whatever that might be. Whatever you are. Mm. Wherever you may be. Mm. Oh, look how they got the camera. Cruising. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's Bima here. We're back for a new season of Bars and Nuggets on Amazon Music. I can't wait to get in some of the incredible stories we have to tell this season. Uh, kicking things off, we're actually gonna start with my brother from the boot, the great John Batiste. You might recall he released this incredible project in 2021 uh, called We Are, and it went on to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. And when I, I heard this project, um, I couldn't help but think it sounds and feels so New Orleans. It has this variation of sounds and, and diversity and growing up there, you know, you really get the sense that I grew up in a truly unique place. And even crazy, crazier maybe, I should say, is um, his connection to, to Lil Wayne. I think we found out that he actually grew up, you know, uh, maybe a couple minutes away from Lil Wayne. And they came together to release a song called Uneasy um, on his latest project, um, World Music Radio. I think John does a, does a great job of bringing that to life. And so we're gonna get a little bit more into that, but also, um, he has this beautiful documentary called American Symphony, where we get to see this really raw and diverse side of John that you don't typically get to see. I can't wait to get into that on this episode of Bars and Nuggets on Amazon Music. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh man. Man, that's great. We got John Baptiste in the building right yeah. now. <laughs> Y'all make some noise. Oh, thank you, little people. I love it. Talk to me about your, your 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 grandfather and your observations, like and what you remember, um, especially you know coming up in New Orleans. Like a lot of people don't it, don't really get it. You know what I mean? Like it is like, and sometimes it's hard to describe. Yeah. Um, but like growing up in that environment, that musical environment, mm -hmm. and you said it was like a ritual. Yeah. yeah what yeah. do you remember observing? Man, the love. Hmm. First off, the, this is a lot of you know, you feel the struggles and everything of life and you have all the things about um, the ups and downs yeah. that we all deal with. But it was just love in a different way than anywhere else I've ever been. Mm. And not knowing that as a kid, you leave and then I'm 17, I'm moving to New York, I'm starting to tour around and you see, wow, this is, it's just something vibrationally different. Yeah. <laughs> And it's hard to explain. It's still misunderstood. People think of New Orleans is like a party yeah. city or yeah. like Bourbon Street. And that, that's like whatever. I, but, I always tell people it's the last place I tell you. To, I was like, I don't even tell people to go there. No. Because you might end up there. You end up <laughs> doing your thing. Whatever. <laughs> whatever you're doing. I don't, but I'm like, I'm so, so grateful. Mm. It was like uh, a lot of things you were taught just vibrationally without having to be expressed. Mm. You just observe and you feel it and you can sense the meaning of things and mm. things still have me like uh, the, the idea of a generation gap mm. is not real. Mm. That's like a perceived thing that we think is real mm. in society and we market to young people and we exploit many things for mm. capitalistic gain. But the essence of humanity and the way that it works and how we work best is in community. Mm. And that's the deep thing about New Orleans It still is so rooted. So you, you spend so much of your time growing up in New York, but I think, you know, the difference is like at home is like, I spent an hour talking to somebody in like the, the grocery exactly parking lot. You, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? And yeah. so like, I, I hear you when you say community and I like, like the, the generational things, um, that, that aspect of it. Musically, have you always felt it the way you feel it now? You know, I didn't always feel it the same way, but I've always been the same me. Hmm. So I think I'm just discovering who I am. Yeah. We always, we're constantly constructing and discovering who we are. Hmm. That's the deep thing about life. Hmm. You take pieces of all this experience, all these people, conversations. Yeah. So I'm so grateful you're doing this and it's real Likewise. and you're just so great. It's just unbelievable to just see the real people, real conversations. Mm -hmm. Cause that changes people who hear it too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's not a, 
No conversation is like a programmable thing. You know, it's it's I not... can't be pro I don't I'll be struggling with that. I struggle so bad. Walking. Well, no, see, we gotta get into that because you I know you have very strong feelings about uh trying to be contained and before we really go into that, I wanted to ask kind of like, you know, your first teachers were your parents. Yeah. And 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 that upbringing combined with Holly Grove, like, what was that like? Like what were you? Cause your 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 mom really believed right in 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 the piano. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. I gotta imagine like, there's a lot going on outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, you know, you talking about uh, early 2000s. I'm coming up. You imagine, when I'm learning music, the only thing you hear, on the radio, the <laughs> mainstream radio is like, Cash Money. But you almost made me say this one for the radio. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like 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 uh cash cash money no limit so much of the music we listened to was local i started like uh i had that happening and then at the same time as that was happening i was studying with these musical legends you talking about marcellus family hmm. uh my family i'm blessed to be born into this long lineage of musicians you have the jordans yeah kid jordan these yeah. people uh, are um, you know Roger Dickerson? They telling me about composition and mm. theme and variation and and form and music and you know this is what Beethoven did. This is what Duke Ellington did. This is what Monk did. And then I was playing video games <laughs> a lot, and I learned from yeah. the soundtrack the of the game because you play it. Yeah, you hear it. You, you, you get stuck you, in your you head. Stuck. So that was all <laughs> happening. And then I got to the piano and it it just I put it all together when it was when I got to the piano. My mother had that vision because she had that prophetic kind of thing. She was like piano. Hmm. So that was where it kind of started to. So it wasn't like that at the beginning with music for me. I was absorbing everything. Yeah, you sponge. It's kind of I don't know. It's, I'm always absorbing stuff. I don't know where it's going to land. But then the piano is like, oh, this is where. This is how you portal. can express it. Yeah. I do want us to get some questions from the audience. If that's oh, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Stanley Lumax. Um, it's an honor to hear you speak. Very inspirational. Uh, speaking of inspiration, I wanted to throw three names at you and just get your, your vibe. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Fela Kuti, Tony Allen, and Jay Electronica. Twenty-five. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Wow. Visionary, culturally authentic in places that actually have culture. Taking the vision and the culture to create universal musical vibrations. That's a form of building and, and and creative construction in all three is needed for things to continue to to thrive and to survive. It's needed for traditions to be passed on. That kind of creativity. You know, you think about what is real hip hop. Hmm. Or you think about the, the music that all the music of the many different, the, the myriad of different rhythms, the Wawanko, Abakwa, the African rhythms, how will that continue? Someone has to imagine <laughs> how to put it in a context that can be authentic, but also translate in a new time and space. Hmm. So that's that's what you brought to mind with those, those artists. Was there ever a push and pull and, a, and you know a tug of of because you mentioned what you were hearing on the radio but then you also mentioned what you were were learning and and being fostered was that something at the same time was kind of like hip-hop and radio kind of being like shunned you know, away that's the beauty of new orleans from where we come <laughs> from it's not it's not like that. Yeah. It's only like that when you get into more stiff environments where people try to control things <laughs> and make it be about something rooted in 
their insecurity. We had, when I was in school, I was blessed to have this, my peers were all geniuses. Wow. You know, you're talking about Atunde Ajiwa, Christian Scott, uh, formerly, and, and you got, you know, he, he was, we looked up to him. He had graduated the year before I started. And then I'm in school with the great Sullivan Fulton, who's a piano player, singer. He's, he's uh, one of the greatest musicians in the world. Mm -hmm. And then Trombone Shorty, yeah. Troy Andrews, mm -hmm. my brother, we started a band together. Mm -hmm. And it was just so eclectic, so free. But I think about that just because all of us are now in the world doing yeah. completely different things. Yeah. And we had the same teachers, the same schools, same, the same family, same tribe, same upbringing in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the broader spectrum of music from New Orleans, from Louisiana. Yeah. I mean, you talk about not just New Orleans, but then you go like Lafayette, where my yeah. grandfather from Baptiste family, Zydeco music, yeah. Cajun music, Creole music. Mm -hmm. So much Afro Latin meets the the the, the Southern blues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so many different forms of rhythm. You got New Orleans funk music, the leaders, yeah. the Nevilles. Is there was no It's unending. There's no shade of like, <laughs> oh, you rap? It's not there was nothing like that. Mm. So there for, for for you when you think about all those different things, is that kind of also where you get to this place of where you just want to pull from these different influences, right? Because like when I listen to world music radio, yeah. for example, right, there's people want to classify it into something. They want to say it's Good this problem. thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not a thing that can be done. I, I think a, a big part of why it's um, it's, it's going to that that whole thing is at some point going to end is mm -hmm. because the truth of an artist and the truth of a person is that we have multitudes within us that mm -hmm. exist. Somebody can be a hero and a villain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out Metro. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, if you have all this within you and you have the ability to put it together and synthesize it and it's cohesive and it's meaningful then why would you limit yourself to fit into a I it just it doesn't make sense to me but what's deep is streaming in the world of of the internet mm -hmm. it's kind of flipping that so like the categories are now extra expansive like yeah. <laughs> super <laughs> prog rock mm -hmm. classical mm -hmm. rap Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, what? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> no, it's just. Speaking of, we're talking about Duke Ellington. Yeah. I think about how, what he says. Only two types of music. It's good and the other kind. It, it's it's cool to think about it like that because yeah. you're really the genre of you. So how do I make the genre that of expresses yeah who I am exactly? It's interesting that you think about it that way. It's actually quite fascinating to hear you actually express it in that way, because. The way it's actually expressed, like from more of an industry side, it strips so much of that emotion out. It strips so much of the human aspect, big time, out of it, right? Like we don't even get to understand why you would explore it in that way because it's just like, oh well, no, it's just this. Yeah, but yeah. nothing is just this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's like, I'm not anti-industry. I'm anti-human limitation. Hmm. hmm. I'm like, I'm, I'm a fan of everybody. Mm -hmm. So I feel like speaking to coming into my own it's it's very much a um i'm introducing a lot of sides to myself and i have a lot of sides <laughs> to converge all of that mm. as an artist to create the genre of john baptiste artistically whatever that is whether i'm like building phones or making shoes or making records or performing it has taken years and i believe that's true for many of the um the artists i admire where they're trying to do some like 360 connections mm. of like all the stuff. I feel like in five to 10 years, I'll have put the vision together. Oh. Where, where, now, nah, okay, now nah, I can you. start. Huh. It's, so, it's interesting that that's your perspective because I'm like, I would think that you'd be like, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm here. 
You know, but you have this, it sounds like you got this hunger of like, I'm ever evolving. Yes, that's the whole thing. I mean, I'm grateful, grateful, moved by success and, and, and accolades that, you know, I, and for my peers to vote or uh, to say that I'm worthy of a recognition is always an honor. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I'll never take for granted. But I, I'm, the creative life is, you gotta wanna live that. It's gotta be an intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's, uh, you won't have enough gas in the tank to make the trip. That's why I love dance. Like, it's, it's spiritual to watch somebody move. It's, mm. it's spirit, it's dancing is, is a manifestation of what we're talking about. Yeah. That embodying of the vibration of frequency of a thing, of a meaning of a essence. Mm. And how do you how do you do that when it's so hard, so hard to be in this space that, you know, we've identified that mm. classification, all this stuff is not about music. Mm. None of it is about music. Mm -mm. Let's just be frank about it. Mm. So then if it's not about music, but the music still has its power mm -hmm. and it still needs to reach people and it still is a it's so much for us. It's a lifeblood for us. Mm -hmm. Humanity needs expression, needs music. Yeah. So you really are a freedom fighter. Hmm. You gotta like strategize how to move through this mire of the, the mammoth mechanics of it all and to get to the thing that means the most. <laughs> like, how do I do that? How do I navigate you know, this system yeah. to still stay aligned with what I'm truly here to do? And it, you know, it was interesting um, in, your, in your documentary you have a scene where you're very frustrated about that. Oh, I, remember. <laughs> I remember it. You were talking to your friend, and it was about there was these two articles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they yeah, were trying yeah. to trying to share you as two different artists. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, like, so I'm a pop star, and I'm a, and but I'm not good enough to be classical, but I'm a pop star. But <laughs> you know it. It's how so frustrating crazy. is that? Yeah, it's it's. I mean, <laughs> do you? But I guess. <laughs> why is why is it such a it's more an expression of them or 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 a reflection of them yeah for sure the yeah. limitations and 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 biases we all have yeah. just our perception yeah you know a lot of the time you're reading something you realize oh well this is this person's perspective and they're dealing with the mechanics of their industry mm -hmm. how do i you know <laughs> get the click or the Hmm. How do I sell the thing or how do I create? It's not built for rigorous criticism or, or analysis. Yeah. So when you have somebody who does it, they stand out and they are those. But like it's, um, the system is not built for that. So everybody is fighting against their own system, <laughs> which is a really interesting, but it's also not broken. Hmm. That's what's deep about the thing. How so? I sound like I'm getting into some Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, it's like, a, cause I'm not one of the people who's like, everything's broken. It's, it's, I'm not dystopian about it. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. It's actually always great. It's always great. I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> Are you, cause you, you have that optimistic out, outlook. Oh yeah. Like, it's and, every, it's always great. And it's, you know, you're like, yeah, you're like, and that's that's your your perspective. And I think it's beautiful, and it's got to be incredibly helpful when you're growing up in certain circumstances, whether that's that's New Orleans and there's things that's happening, and things that that are happening now, right? Where yeah. you could have that outlook, but then you know you and your partner, right? Yes, yes. So like a, you know leukemia ten years ago, leukemia a year ago, going through or a year and a half ago, going through treatment. How do you stay so optimistic through those challenges? Man, I, you know, first off, I'm a man of faith. God is, I believe, the creator of the universe. So that's a beautiful thing to, to have God in all of us. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. The creator of the universe is in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Powerful thing. So it helps you to understand that everything happens for a reason. Mm. And then it starts to seek, well, what is the reason? What is the ultimate destination? Mm. We're all going to cross that bridge. Yeah. So that's happening. Then 
a lot of things become very clear. Like it's a very clear what hmm. actually means something, and then you there's a freedom in that, and then you start to discover that you cannot know. There's so much that's unknowable. Hmm. It's so vast. So then you let go of a lot of things you may hold on to, and then that's trust. That's what faith. It's, I could go and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But it's just a. I don't understand how there's um. Anybody who, who can walk this planet and think they know anything, <laughs> like I still don't feel like I know anything about music. Mm. Like I'm, <laughs> and I spent the most time with that. <laughs> with, with that, <laughs> of all things in your life, <laughs> like it's, yeah, that's how mm. to 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 surrender to. The belief and understanding of your own purpose and divinity. Mm. And know that um, God is real, mm-hmm. and for me, I mean, my faith as a Christian, you 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 study the the life of Christ, and you study what's happened in the world and how everything has come. And there's uh, so many problems with religion, but yeah. it's not about that for me. I had my own moment last year with 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 surrendering, mm-hmm. you know, because it was like I found myself stuck in like a place of like suffering with a thing and I'm like it's not mine to hold on to (laughs) right you know it's it's it it doesn't make sense and like this whole sense of like relief came realizing and and also like a part of it was like I feel like that happens also when I go home yeah because you're reminded of like you can't control anything and that's a lot of the spirit Mm -hmm. of New Orleans a lot of spirit of Lafayette, Baton Rouge, yes. it's like, and I think that's what people get misconstrued is like, oh, you just celebrate, you don't care, you don't have any worries. Right. It's like, no, it's not that. Like, I do care about a ton of things, but I also recognize what I cannot control. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you just can't. Yeah. You, know? you, you recognize it, you accept it, and then you, there's a catharsis, a release. Mm. The, like, the, the, the funerals in New Orleans this year, you know, well, last year now, we we uh, we buried my mentor. I was telling you about mm-hmm. the uh, kid Jordan, avant-garde jazz musician, saxophonist, educator, yeah, b- just a genius of 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 the culture and the music and passing that on to us. Mm-hmm. And he had the biggest processional coming out of the uh, the, the service into the street. It was just music playing, everybody just singing and dancing. And you wouldn't think that that matches for a funeral. Yeah. But there's something so important about mm. that process in, in grieving and that framing of loss and grief. You know, the joy of living still being available to us. Mm. So we got, a, we got a question coming up here, uh, actually coming from the Recording Academy, so if we can have you then share a little bit more. My name is Courtney Roberts. Um, I'm a student at Texas Southern University. Uh, all of us here in the front row are recipients of the BMC Your Future Is Now Scholarship wow. um, in partnership with Amazon Music. <laughs> Thank you. And my question specifically, um, even though I'm based in Houston right now, I'm originally from a small town in deep east Texas called Nacogdoches. Uh, it's, yeah. It's the neighbor, it's yeah. the sister town in Nacogdoches, so I'm wow. a yeah. bred and born wow. country girl, but like I'm yeah. in the city now. So I want us to ask you, do you truly like value your Southern heritage? Because you know, it's a lot of stigmatisms that are put upon mm-hmm. us like in this industry. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, even professionally on an artistic level, we weren't always taken seriously, I mean, Andre had to make it clear we had something to say. So I wanted to know, like, from your standpoint, especially as, like, a Southern black woman, navigating the space where, like, you know, I'm in the city, I'm in Los Angeles or New York, a lot of people don't understand me or they be like, oh, I love your accent in a very condescending tone. Like, how do you go about that, you know, just in your day-to-day life, I mean, on a professional level, on a personal level? For me, it was to humble myself hmm. because I, not not even from a perspective of, them being right, but me knowing who I am and knowing that they're wrong mm-hmm. and knowing that they can't get in the way of what I'm going to do anyway. Right. <laughs> so I don't need to even say anything when you disrespect me. Mm. Mm. 
all I got to do is forward motion, upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see what the result is. Mm -hmm. your, your underestimation is actually the thing that's detrimental to you. Because mm -hmm. then we could be doing great things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So then I'm just like, well, okay, you told me who you are. <laughs> and I hope one day you learn better. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. How did you get to the point where you have the ability to be free in your own skin like you are? Because there's... A lot of people are not mm. able to mm. sit. Now, I've watched you, and it's just to sit and be, you know, because I love it, man. But just like to be, to just be and listen. Yeah. We've, we, we really got to get back to deep listening. And I'll be honest with you, um, it's been a bit of an unlearning and a relearning mm -hmm. of myself. Um, and just to give you your flowers while you're here, you, you, you are an inspiration in that regard because I, I see how you carry yourself and how you, you're able to express yourself. And I feel like I'm still reconnecting with that because I spent, I spent a decade of my life, you know, working in corporate environments, you know, corporate marketing environments. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was so much I, I had to adjust or contain or can only provide an offer this so folks can understand or not, you know, ostracize me or box me out right because of these different things I mean like even the hair right like I didn't my hair hadn't been this long when I, when I worked in these environments for the reasons of like am I gonna get stereotyped mm -hmm. or like you know I tell people I'm from Louisiana I'm from Baton Rouge and the first question is where's the accent <laughs> this first question and I'm like I wish I had it <laughs> genuinely I do but it got lost in, you know, that that journey of being a part of these environments. And now I'm like, I don't want any part of it. You know, I just want to I want to be. Yeah. It's also it's also like, who are you? I'm the I'm the authority. Who are you to be the arbiter of my authenticity? Mm. Mm. How, why? Why am, are you set up to reward me? <laughs> For me being the thing that I am. <laughs> yeah. I, it doesn't make I, sense. I, I, yes. Oh, man. It doesn't make sense. But it's also learning. Like, I love hearing from other creatives about how, how they can express themselves and, like, where does it come from? And, like, why do you love music so much? And it's a language, but it's, a, it's not a language. <laughs> you know, it's, it's painting. It's, it's, it's all these different things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, like, you really embody that. Oh man, I try to, to, if we don't do what we do, then the next generation won't see us. Yes. They won't see them. Yes. That's the deep thing about what's happening. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we've already talked about so many different influences of our generations mm -hmm. and like why it's important for us to see mm -hmm. examples. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for what you came through, yeah. that's a powerful testament. Mm -hmm to that and also important thing to to know that it was worth it <laughs> like because it could yeah. seem like man why i gotta do all do, doing this and that because you don't know you don't know who you go you don't know when you're going through it yeah right and then you spoke spoke about faith and faith is like you you you, you don't need to question it yeah, yeah you're just on the journey you're on yeah and it'll become what it'll become because i think about that too with arriving somewhere people don't know what the journey was yeah they we, we see you now and we don't really understand like well, <laughs> you don't know what the bad days were like yeah we don't know what the days were like where you were just performing on the street on the subway and you didn't know you you, you told me you was eating goya beans <laughs> yeah right right yeah, it's like man it's real it's, it it's important to, to tell those and share those and love so that people know oh you're not alone out here this is just a this is what it is. Mm. It's it's what it is, mm. and it's worth it. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Talk talk to me about as as your life has changed so much, right? From the seven year stretch on the on the Stephen Colbert show, mm. yes, and then you know now these pockets of movies and um, 
11 Grammy nominations for one album, now another Album of the Year nomination for World Music Radio. How do you stay grounded with all of the, the movement and mm. uh, calls for attention and people pulling and, and all these things? How do you stay and create space for you yeah. and then your relationship and, you know? That's a great Great question. I've been thinking about that a lot since we made the documentary. Because mm. uh, it's, it's more about how do you integrate all of the, the priorities of your life so that they serve each other. Making music and having this career and being in the public eye and then having a family and a... Um, relationship that you are, are so nurturing of and pouring into can't be at odds with each other. So how do you establish values, principles really, yeah. that that make it possible for both things to exist? To exist. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you were talking, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I get it. Cause if you don't, if you don't, yeah. no one else is gonna respect that. Simple, it's just up to you. The mm. difficulty is, is that's on you. <laughs> you got to decide. Yeah. And that means if you do this, then sometimes then this doesn't work. Mm. But if this has all the things that matter to you most considered, mm. then sometimes you could lose all the rest mm. and be okay with that, even if it's something you may have thought you wanted. That was super important. Yeah. Right. Like it's, you know, my career is great. But what's my career if I don't have my family and my friends or myself, my my mind, my peace of my mind, right? Yeah, like peace of mind. <laughs> like, ooh, what I'm, I'm gonna be walking around here? <laughs> no, that, I was thinking of the um, the career piece, and I realized, oh, I love being creative. Mm. The career is a, a way for me to have a portal for my creativity to exist. Mm. So I should serve the creative muscle, mm. build that, yeah. and find the most authentic ways for that mm. to exist in the world, mm. to have a career, <laughs> to reframing. Mm. Hard to like, takes a lot of thought to come up with a very simple, might be like a shift on a dial. Yeah. And then it's still hard. Yeah. As, as we all, that's just life and living. Mm. You over here giving giving sermons. Oh, man. <laughs> the the other thing that I thought was so interesting about your documentary was because um, speaking of grounding and and authenticity of it is um, it was so open, you know it was it was so personal. Um, did you ever feel a type of way about like how open you would be and and revealing about yourself and and your family? Wow, I was thinking of the. I'm so funny. It's this instrument. It's this, it was this horn right here. And the, mm. the first scene when it opens, and I was playing on the on the river. Yeah. I would go out to that river and play into like. <laughs> just like play some melodies, mm. and I I would get grounded. I didn't know when we were filming that what was to come. Yeah. But it's so so important in the in setting up the story chronologically, that scene, because um it, it kinda answers the question of, you know, I felt at peace because I found that center, that grounding, that practice of meditation and breathing and playing in in in, in um in harmony with the water. Everything that never goes away come from. Hmm. The 
divine stream of consciousness that connects all people. It's a musical allegory for that. So love, family, even hardship, struggle, that's it. That's it, yeah. So it's more than just a love song that does. It never went away. Oh. Every time I see your face, the feeling's just the same. I do that going into a new year, yeah, that's and that's amazing. when we started the film. Wow. And that was yeah. my surrendering moment, trusting of whatever's to come is meant to come. Yeah. And what came is what came. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that scene actually is not said in the film, but that was what my internal processing was when mm. you watch that. Yeah. And then what happened, I kept yeah. referring back to that. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm um, and I didn't tell Matt, the filmmaker, to put that as the first scene. It's his film. I didn't tell him to do anything. But him putting that as the first scene, and that was like mm. the first day we shot together. Yeah. Hm. And what I was doing in that moment <laughs> and how it all transpired, yeah. it felt bigger than me to say, shut the camera off. It felt like it was meant to be filmed and captured, mm. into whatever it was going to be captured. And we were doing that by, without having funding at the time. We were yeah. filming it, creating it. I didn't know if it was going to be a movie or not. It was just wow. something we were filming and doing as a means of um, maybe making a film if it turned out to be that. Yeah. And then, you know, fast forward, it's on Netflix. It's, and it comes, yeah. So you never know. <laughs> Follow that creative. Follow it, right? You got to trust it. Just, just yeah. go with it. Don't be, I think we try to be so, again, that's the control part. Yeah. Try to. Control it so much to think, oh, this is gonna get this. We right. don't know. You don't know. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Can't control it. <laughs> Can't hold. <laughs> you gotta just roll with it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's funny you picked up the instrument. I, I I wanted to ask you what happens if you put it down when someone told you to put it down, right? Because you this you know we we see this now. It's like it's a part of you now. But there's a part of your life where people were trying to say. Man, put that thing down. Put that toy down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's a part of life. You mm. got to face the the friction. Mm. You got to go go face it. Yeah. So there's a, it's a lot of things in this life that only you can know of yourself. Mm. So then you got to believe that it's true, even if the outside doesn't yeah. reflect it yet. Yeah. They won't get it till later. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's cool. I like playing. I like playing this in it's the imagination. You can take a spoon. People play spoons. You play it. You know, washboards. Washboards. Anything. You got the imagination. Hmm. You could bust it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know what? You know where you just took me with that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Records. Yes. Wow. Where where do you listen? Are you asking me in the physical sense or yeah? Yeah, like yeah. you got a spot you listen to. Oh, oh my goodness. I yeah. was talking about I listen in parties when other music is playing. Yeah. <laughs> like a crazy person. Yeah. I do that. I don't know what you know, where do you listen to music? So you know, it's funny, um, you know, I, I I live in Portland. Yeah. And uh we got a lot of like hills and mounds and yeah. stuff like that. We just moved into this neighborhood. And uh it's funny, like is I you know Portland's like a majority white yeah, yeah. city and so yeah. and also home ownership has been a thing that's been very tough for for the black community and so like we have this this home and uh you know I was uh you know we had we had done a different interviews and I like to like just just you know hear the music when I get into it right. but like you I can't really sit still mm. when I'm listening even when I'm walking I can't be like a normal yeah. walk so when I'm walking I love to like I try to listen to a project all the way through and I try not to finish my walk until the project is yeah, done. Yeah. And I just can't help but like, you know, I'll just be walking, I'll just hit a move and I mean, yeah. like, I know they're looking at me like something's going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, oh snap. 
What's up with him? What's up with him? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm used to that. <laughs> I was like, man. He's <laughs> <It's exciting>. like, <laughs> when I was in school, that's the same thing. Huh. Had my headphones doing that. You know, well, now people know, but back then it wasn't. <laughs> was that something you felt like, how did you deal with it back then, right? Because, you know, there's, I think now, you know, we, we were talking about getting comfortable in your skin. And very young, you know, I definitely had those insecurities about like, you know, didn't realize like that was just me doing my thing. I didn't realize like it would it would allow other people to project maybe what they weren't, felt like they weren't able to do. Right. And I didn't know what that was. That that's great, man, that you have that that ability, even without having a, a, a musical outlet, yeah. so to speak, yeah. to just be free. I love seeing other kindred souls. Mm. Just being able to be, be whatever you are. Yeah. Whatever that might be. Whatever you are. Mm. Wherever you may be. Mm. Oh, look at they got the camera. Over there. <laughs> cruising. I ain't peeping. You, you ain't peeping over there. You got one there. You got one there. You got one here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 you got me thinking about that for some reason because we're listening to it, right, but right. certain music is like spiritual vibration setting. Oh, yeah, it just it could set, it do something, something to the, you. Yeah. Boom. And, and for me, I'll get into a loop. I don't know about you. Like, if something hit you like that, yeah. sometimes I'll get stuck on oh, it. Yeah, I'll listen to it a hundred <laughs> times. Yeah. What's the, what's the last thing you listened to, or maybe the most recent thing you listened to, where you're like, I can't stop listening to this? I mean, that Bob, mm. Mm. that was because I was in the studio and I just, uh, we just wrote a song mm. that felt like it gave me this feeling that I got when I first heard The Wailers. Mm. It, 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 it was something that was connected to that and I was like, oh. Mm. So then I revisited now this morning. <laughs> you know, so it was, uh, it was just in. It was top of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Man, New Orleans and, and Jamaica have that connection. Mm -hmm. You know what they said? That rhythm came from, they, they had a radio frequency that they tap into from Jamaica hmm. that was broadcast in New Orleans when New Orleans in the, um, 40s and 50s had this just influx of genius musicians mm. changing R&B and, and that was really the origin of rock and roll became. Yeah. And that music was playing and everybody was was um, listening to it in Jamaica but through uh, a rigged system of like <laughs> you just figure out like a way a to get Like a pirate radio. Yeah, yeah. The, but the signal wasn't coming through mm. so clear and some of the beats would drop out. Huh. So the interpretation of that rhythm. That's wild. Flipped. Yeah. Into the rhythm of the reggae music. That's fascinating. <laughs> but if you listen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we go, we got, we got a mic. I know y'all got a ton of questions for y'all. <laughs> we got one more over here. I'm gonna go right here. How you doing, John? Uh, my name is Joseph. Um, honor to meet you. I'm a piano major. I'm a, with one of these, uh, all of my scholarship recipients, Ooh. fellow, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, throughout my time at school, I, I feel like I've seen a lot just in the music world and on social media a lot. People tend to hold classical music or European music to a higher standard of genius or complexity or virtuosity comparison to other genres. And I just wanted to ask you, as somebody who can compose and perform different genres, how you feel about that, you know, your perspective on that, or if you hold a genre to a higher level than another in terms of genius or complexity. Hmm. Wow, so, hmm. yes, great, great observation. I'm glad another <laughs> <laughs> piano brethren. But I, I find it to be a, a difficult thing to take music and put it in a category of being more than or less than 
other music. I can say that the origins of certain styles came more from a folkloric place rather than a commercial place. And when commerce is involved, then I still don't feel that there's any sense of uh, judging music that way in terms of what's more or less sophisticated. But what I will say is that the objectives of different musical styles and expressions are very, very varied and very different. And because of that, the power structures, institutions, conservatories, whoever's had the ability to set the tone, have established that European classical music is more sophisticated than jazz music or something else. And that's changing. You've seen now that there's classes on, you know, Illmatic, yeah. mm -hmm. or whether it's NYU with Lana Del Rey or, or, or Taylor Swift at Harvard. That will continue to change, so that already dispels this notion that one thing is worthy of being in conservatory study more so than the other, because it's just about the people who are behind it that set the precedent of what they value at that time mm -hmm. and what the era dictates. So I think a lot of it dealt with that more so than the music itself. Um, a reluctance to recognize and revere black genius in America is why jazz versus classical music and, a, you know, um, European exceptionalism that still is present, you know, a, a over reverence and a deeming something synonymous with sophistication if it has a, a French accent to it. <laughs> so there's all that that's happening, right? But then there's the objectives of the music, which tell you a lot, too, by the greats of each style of music and what they can do, and that speaks the most. Mm. So, you know, Louis Moreau Gottschalk, or, or even just Pops, Louis Armstrong, could play jazz music, could play classical music, could play music from Cuba. He could play all of the different styles of music that existed before him, and he created a style of music. Mm -hmm. Every great jazz musician can play almost every style of music. Classical musicians, especially modern classical musicians, most of them can only play what's on the page. That wasn't always the case. Bach was an improvising musician. Many musicians had a practice of improvising, but again, the principles of the era now make it such that this is more sophisticated than that, but these musicians can only play this, and these musicians can play that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I don't ever take what somebody tells me, but that's how I perceive it. Thank you so much. Yeah. It means a lot. Appreciate your question. Thank y'all so much and, and congrats again to you all. Y'all make some clap for yourself. <laughs>